So you may have noticed if you follow my channel at all that I freaking love Cyberpunk 2077. Like, it's seriously my most favoritest game of all time. And the only thing that's better than Cyberpunk 2077 is Cyberpunk 2077 in VR. On the channel, I have several videos on optimizing Cyberpunk for VR and fixing issues with the Luke Ross Real Mod for VR. And I decided it was time to do a video that includes all of the tips and tricks and settings and troubleshooting and knowledge that I've gathered over the last year year for cyberpunk and vr in one place for convenience and hopefully to answer some of the most frequent questions that i get about this mod on a daily basis so i'll go ahead and timestamp everything in the description for your convenience that way you can just skip ahead whatever issue may you may be having or anything that you want as far as the categories of this mod or video so anyway let's get started okay first things first i really recommend that you start this from a fresh install of the game you will need to make sure that you have your GPU drivers up to date. Make sure that you have most the most up to date version of Luke's mod. Uh, to get that, you just head on over to Luke's Patreon and you doubt it, download it from there. It, yes, it's behind a paywall, and I know many people take issue with that, you know, and that's fine. But if you really want it, it's like ten bucks. Just pay for it, download it, and then cancel your subscription. Of course, when the game is updated, sometimes it breaks the mod, so you may have to go back and download it again. But that way, you're not paying ten bucks a month. Uh, and if you're only wanting the mod for Cyberpunk, there probably won't be too many more updates needed since C CDPR has pretty much said that they are done with Cyberpunk now and they're moving on to the sequel. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> once you have the mod downloaded, extract it to your Cyberpunk folder where the exe is located for example and it might not exactly be this way but for me it's like c program files steam library steam apps common cyberpunk 2077 bin x64 now once you've installed that mod go into that x64 file and run the real config bat file uh, and that's all you need to do. The game should now start up in VR. There will be a pop-up on your monitor asking you to assign an overlay key. Uh, just hit pause on your keyboard for that. Now, if you're playing with gamepad as I do to bring up the overlay, you just hit both triggers at once. Now we come to the number one question that I get every day about this mod. When I try to start the game with my Quest 2, it doesn't work in VR. It just gives me a 2D screen in the headset. Now the most likely reason for this, perhaps, is that you are launching the game from a virtual desktop, you know, either the Oculus tool or the one from Guy Gooden. And for any reason, the game cannot enter VR. So they're looking at the virtual desktop screen, which mirrors the display monitor, uh, and see the game running as if you're on a flat screen. But actually, VR has or VR hasn't started at all because of some errors. Steam VR, however, is a special case. <clears throat> if it's running before the modded game starts, it will almost invariably cause problems. So. I only advise it using Steam VR when it's absolutely needed, like for the Valve Index. And even then, making sure that only Steam is running before the game, not Steam VR. The mod will spawn its own instance of Steam VR when necessary. And that will bypass the launch problems where Steam VR thinks it knows better than the user which game should or should not run in VR. So to get the mod working properly with a standalone headset like the Quest 2, this is how I do it. I simply put on the headset and link up to the PC with AirLink. Then I use PC VR Oculus software to bring up the monitor in your headset like so. Then just hover over the game shortcut on your monitor and hold down the trigger until this square forms and this box will open up that allows you to open Cyberpunk. The launcher will then start the game. Press the trigger again and the game will launch into VR. Do not use virtual desktop. Do not have Steam VR open first. Hopefully this solves that issue for you. If not, I just don't know what to tell you. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> if you have other mods that you are using, please get them all installed and make sure they're working properly before you install the Luke Ross mod. If you have Luke's mod already installed and you would like to add more mods, it's best to disable the mod before you add the other mods to make sure that they're all working properly first. Then install Luke's mod. Uh, to disable Luke's mod, just go into the file and have it installed. For example, the C program files Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Cyberpunk, Bin, X64, and look for the dxgi.dll file. Then you rename that to dxgi underscore back dot dll. 
and it the mod should be disabled to reinstall the mod just install it like you usually would okay let's talk about the real overlay how to get to it and how to navigate it to bring up the real mod overlay simply go into the game menu screen by hitting either one of the menu buttons on your gamepad then click both the left and right trigger at the same time or the hotkey you assigned to your you know, when you first installed the mod on your keyboard. For future reference here, I play on a gamepad, and I have no idea how to do all this stuff with the mouse and keyboard, but I'm sure it says there's some literature on that somewhere. Now that you should see the real mod overlay in your headset. Okay, first things first. If you want to record or stream via capture with OBS, use your directional buttons to scroll all the way to the bottom of the overlay, and you'll see a box that needs to be checked to enable OBS. Uh, I've used Oculus Mirror as well, for example, when I haven't had to check that box and it works just fine, so you can do it that way too. Now you should be able to see or, or capture the using OBS for your recording or streaming. One issue you may have when you start playing is when you have your weapons drawn, they are very awkwardly placed right in front of your face and it makes it real hard to see what is going on in front of you. To fix this issue, bring up the overlay as usual and then hold down the X button on your gamepad. I think it might be circle on the PS5 controllers, I'm not sure. But uh, when you do this, a little square box will pop up to the side with lots of extra options in it. To use the left bumper on your gamepad to scroll up to the CP2077 tab and select that. You will notice when you scroll down this menu that there's a camera option for regular FOV, aiming, driving, and the like. Just open the Tweak First Person Camera Offset selection and you will be able to move your camera up and down and forward and backwards to your liking. Another issue you may have is the HUD. Uh, when you're playing it's too big or the text is out of your FOV for certain reasons like description boxes and the like. Uh, just as before, go into the game menu screen, hit both triggers to bring up the real overlay. Use your directional button to scroll down to the area that has the HUD sizes. And there you'll be able to tweak your regular aiming HUD, your regular HUD, uh, I think there's a driving HUD, a couple other selections. Just simply highlight those by clicking on them and then use your directional pad to make the HUD bigger or smaller with your sliders, uh, you know, left or right, to your personal taste. Sometimes while you're playing, you may notice that the crosshairs and the text boxes and descriptions when you hover over them are doubled. Uh, I'm hoping that this issue will be fixed and forever gone, but until then there is a relatively easy fix. Just go into your real overlay and use the D-pad to scroll to the pixels per density slider, highlight that, and then use your directional button to move the slider up one tick. Then scroll right underneath that to adapt resolution and click on that. You'll get a brief moment where your screen kind of freaks out and then it's back to normal. Uh, back out of that menu and the issue will be fixed. You may have to do this every so often while you play though. If you would like to use Reshade, first make a copy of the dxgi.dll file from your x64 file where you installed Luke's mod and then paste that somewhere not in that file. And then go back to that x64 file and delete that DXGI DLL file. After your reshade has been installed, put that copy of or yeah, the DXGI.DLL file back, back into that x64 pot file. Just click yes to overwrite the one reshade installed. <clears throat> now, to download reshade, just go to reshade.me download the latest version of reshade run the exe and select cyberpunk 2077 from the games list click next and then select dx 11 12 option then click next and skip the next screen and then on the next screen click unselect at the top and then click select all and then click next and it will download all of the shaders and once that is done uh, select the reshade mod you want from Nexus. For example, I like Mango's Ultra Reshade. Install that mod, and then when you go into the game, go into a menu screen and bring up your overlay. Hold down the X button on the gamepad and then use the left bumper to scroll up to the reshade tab. Once you're there, at the top you will see a reshade preset box. Just highlight that and use the left and right directional pad to select the reshade that you want, and that's it. It should be loaded. Okay, last thing I'm covering on the overlay is AER alternate eye rendering. All right, you have a few options here. 
First, bring up the real overlay and scroll down to the AER area. You will have either a one half, a one third, or a legacy as your options. If you are on a 3080 or lower GPU, I'm not sure what the AVMD equivalents are here, but anyway, you, you can look those up. Use legacy AER. I've tried AER2 on the 2080 Super and the resolution has to be so low that the game looks like a PS1 game and there are all kinds of artifacts and it's just not a pleasant experience. If you are on a 3080 or a 3080 Ti and you want to try AER2, use the one third setting and try it out, but I'm not promising you're going to like it. If you have a 3090 Ti and up, I think you are good for AER2. The one thing I would highly recommend with AER2 is to never have your refresh rate in your headset set any higher than 80 hertz. I personally tried it at 90 hertz and the frames would do this rhythmic pausing and skipping forward as you try to move and there was significant haloing around 3D objects and characters and it just didn't look that good. At 120 hertz, it's an absolute skippy jumpy mess and totally unplayable. But at 80 hertz, everything ran buttery smooth. So, you have two options as far as AER2 goes, one third and one half. One third would be good for people using the 3090s up to 4080 cards. You may be able to try one half on 4080 cards just to see if it works well for you. I don't really have any solid test results from anyone to tell me if it works good for them. Um, at the AER2 one third setting, you should try to get a solid 60 frames per second. You will see that on the real overlay right here. If you are fortunate enough to rock a 4090, set the AER2 to one half. You should be getting a solid 80 frames per second. Remember, AER2 is basically frame generation for VR. So with this, you'll get a solid, or should be getting a solid 60 to 80 frames per second respectively. With legacy AER for your lower to mid range cards, set your refresh rate on your headset as high as you can. The more frames you can get, the better your experience will be. With Legacy AER, you will experience a ghosting of the characters and objects moving lateral to your vision, and there that, that's an optical illusion. It cannot be recorded, but you will definitely see it. AER2 generates frames, so that illusion is vanquished. With Legacy AER, you will also likely see some significant haloing around characters and objects. The best way to reduce that is through resolution. The higher you can get your resolution, the better because of the smaller pixels. With AER2, there is some haloing, but it's greatly reduced, uh, especially in darker areas. You don't see it at all. This is a really great place to talk about game settings. We will start with Legacy AER. The first settings to look at are the resolution settings. Now, Luke has the real mod default to something like 2472 by 2472. I may be a little dyslexic in my memory there, uh, so that might not be exactly what they are, but it's something like that. Anyway, with my 2080 Super, I found that setting the resolution one tick below that default that Luke had things gave me a really smooth experience. If you were noticing skippy frames when moving and walking, resolution settings will be one of the biggest that have effect on as far as what I've found. With both Legacy and AER2, the higher you can have the resolution, the better. In the graphic settings, I usually have the texture quality set to high, DLLS set to balanced or performance depending on what works best for your system. Uh, I would not recommend trying DLSS 3 or frame generation because it doesn't work in VR and you won't like it. <laughs> Make sure you have motion blur and film grain, chromatic aberration, V-Sync and lens flare all off. The rest of the settings I like contact shadows uh, and improve facial lighting geometry on. Uh, and as anisot Ugh, I don't know how to say anisotropy. I think that's what it anisotropy. Then we're just gonna say it that way. An anis anisotropy. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go with anisotropy. There you go. I usually have that set to 16. Then everything to low, all the way down to volumetric cloud quality, which I have set to off. Uh, max dynamic decals to high, screen space reflections to high, ambient occlusion to low, color precision to medium, and then mirror quality, uh, level of detail, and crowd density to high. Those are the same settings I use with AER2. I just keep all the same graphical settings and then set the re resolution to one tick below max. <clears throat> That's the sweet spot that I have found that gives me an amazing looking game and runs smooth as butter. 
Uh, now that's on an i9 13900K and an RTX 4090. So uh, make adjustments as needed. Like I said, your best bet is to start with resolution. If, it, if things aren't running really smooth, just lower it a tick, then try it and just keep doing that because that's probably where you're going to get the most results. Um, I, I keep my settings uh, the same on the 4090 because I what I found is at lower resolutions, the game is pretty blurry and you really couldn't see any of those effects you get from the higher graphics settings anyway. Uh, even on lower resolution headsets like the Rift S, the higher the resolution, even if it shouldn't be able to be seen on that headset, it just looks way better. So I'm not a tech nerd. I don't understand all that shit, but I do know what I see with my own eyes. So, you know, don't come at me. <laughs> just try it out. You'll see for yourself. Now, one other thing that happens sometimes with this mod, for whatever reasons, is you will get these bright, flashy boxes at the top of your FOV. If that happens, it means that even if it appears as so, your game window is not on top. I use two monitors, so what I usually have to do if that's happening is I press the big Xbox button on my controller to bring up my Oculus menu overlay, and then I click on the monitors and select monitor 2. The, the one the game isn't on, and I look at that monitor and press my trigger. Then I bring up monitor one, and I look at that monitor and press my trigger, and then the game should be working fine. Now, if you try it and the monitor two kind of fades, it, it comes on and fades away before you get a chance to do it, just bring up your monitor one, look at it, click the button, and then go back to the monitor two, look at it, and it should be there, click the button, then go back to monitor one and do the same thing. That, that, that should bring it back and that should fix your little flashy box problem. All right, so that pretty much covers all of it. I know it's a lot, but hopefully somewhere in here I've answered your questions. Um, I'm always up to chatting about Cyberpunk and trying the best of my knowledge and ability to help people out so they can have the best VR experience possible in Night City. So if you found this helpful, I would love it if you'd hit like and subscribe and ring that little bell uh, for more Cyberpunk and other AAA VR modded games. Thanks for watching. Dr. Greg out.